Hi folks, so the question we have here today is based on surface geometry and specifically the area of dihedral angles. So I'm just going to read the question and then get started on it, okay? So the question says the projections of a triangular base solid are given and uh, determine the dihedral angle between surface A and B. Okay, so we can obviously see the pictorial view of it down here and we have the elevation up here and the plan view of it down here. And what we have to do is we have to get the dihedral angle uh, between the surfaces A and B. And as stated in a previous question, the dihedral angle is the angle between the line of intersection of two surfaces. So we can see A and B are meeting at this surface here. And that is known where they meet as the line of intersection. And the angle obviously in between that line of intersection and those surfaces is what's known as a dihedral angle. Okay, and what we have to do is we have to get uh, the dihedral angle essentially, and there's two methods to do that. There is one which is the rebatment method, and the other one which is the auxiliary views method. But both of them involve the exact same starting, and it means we have to actually take an auxiliary view. And what that auxiliary view is, we need the auxiliary view of the line of intersection, and we need to get the true length of that. So what we're going to do is, from our plan view, we're going to project perpendicular to the line of intersection, set up an x1, y1, and we're going to get the true length of it, taking our heights from the elevation. So I'm going to do that there now, and I'm going to speed up the video. Okay, now what we have done is we have got the true length of our line of intersection. And if I just use um, a pen here, and I'm just going to go over this line here on the pictorial view, and that line there is essentially what we're after getting the true length of. Okay, and what we need to do is uh, first of all, we're going to start off with the rebatment method. And a way of using the rebatment method to locate uh, the dihedral angle is by uh, doing a perpendicular cutting plane to the line of intersection. Okay, so essentially what we're doing is, and I will just put in one particular cutting plane first of all, and then I'll relate to the 3D graphic here. So to do a perpendicular cutting plane, it doesn't matter where it goes through. So I'm going to set up my 45 degree set square on the line of intersection, and I'm going to rotate it so that I have a perpendicular angle to it. It does not matter where. I could do it here, I could do it here, it doesn't matter. I'll just move it a little bit. And what I'm actually going to do, I'll actually bring it in a little bit further. Probably easier. There we go. And essentially what I'm doing there, that angle in there is perpendicular. And essentially what I'm doing there is that is a cutting plane that is cutting off this. So that perpendicular plane here, okay? Now, at that point, it cuts through the ground here at two points. And we're going to label them three and four. Okay, and they are on the surfaces A and B on the ground, the traces of where A hits the ground and where B hits the ground. Okay, so just looking at that, I'll project them back now, just to find them in my plan view. Okay, and technically, let's say this one was 3 and this one was 4. Okay. Now, they are 3 and 4, and they are on the ground, so they are, so they will be on the X, Y line. They are on our traces of our planes. Now, if I relay it over here to the graphic, the cutting plane, this point up here, would actually be this point here. Okay? Uh, on the A trace, this point here would be 3. And on the B trace, which is this line here, this would be 4. Okay, and once again, obviously, the line of intersection we had one and at the very top, two. And essentially, what we're after getting here, and I'll just go over it again, is we are after getting a cutting plane that is perpendicular. It's hard to obviously sketch a perpendicular cutting plane in a pictorial view, but the angle between the line of intersection and that face there, that, that triangle that I'm after creating, is that they are perpendicular. That's the relationship between them. So if I shade that in now, just with a little bit of red, that angle inside in here, this angle, 
on that face, on that red face there, that is actually my dihedral angle. Okay? And that's what we're trying to find out here. So that red face there, okay, is on the cutting plane. And that is actually signified here in our X1, Y1. I forgot to put that in earlier. This is our X1, Y1 because it's an auxiliary. That is actually signified by this red line here. That red line is actually this face. And the only way, if I was to project back this point, which is on the, is on the um, line of intersection, which is up here, if I was to project that back that point, that would actually be right here. Okay? It would be at this position. And if I join that to 3 and 4, well, that does create an angle, but it's not the angle uh, or the true angle of the dihedral angle that I would see in my plan view, because that point there is when it is up here at this height. What I need to do is I need to get this surface, and if, if 3 and 4 was like a hinge, Okay, and essentially what I'm doing is I'm getting that surface and I'm folding it down. Okay, so basically I'm taking the top of it at this point here and it's folding down. Okay, it's going down here all the way to the ground until it hits the ground. Okay, and essentially then if I was to join these points up now, there'd be an angle inside in there. I mightn't see it on the page, but there would be an angle. So what I'm going to do is at 3 and 4, that's going to act like my hinge, and I'm going to put it to the top of the cutting plane, where it's cutting the line of intersection, and I'm going to rebat it down. It's called a rebat method. And at this point here, that is where it is on the ground. Okay? And at that point there, we are going to transfer it back to our plan view. And there we go. So you can see the difference between the points. That is when it was up on the height, whereas this is at the position when it is on the ground. And here we go. Now, at this point here, I have now found the dihedral angle between the surfaces A and B. And that was done, that angle inside and there. Okay. Sometimes signified by that. And that there is the dihedral angle. Okay, that is the rebatment method. Now, another method we could use, okay, if you didn't like the rebatment method and you're not fully sure on that one, is we could do the auxiliary views method. And that is essentially where we do two auxiliaries. We have one of them done. We've already got the line of intersection, the true length of it. And the other way, or to complete that using the other method, which is the auxiliary views method, is to see the line of intersection as a point view. And that was explained previously. And the only way I could look at the line of intersection as a point view is I'd actually have to look down along the line. So I would. I'd have to look down along the line to see it as a point view. So if I project out parallel to the line or the true length of the line of intersection 1, 2, if I project out, okay, and set up an x2, y2, which is another auxiliary view, okay, that is known as an X2, Y2, okay? And what I can do is, from my X1, Y1 back, because when we project out the X2, Y2, we take our distances from the last X, Y line back, so in this case, it's the X1, Y1 back to our plan, and the distance from the X1, Y1 back to 1 is the same as the distance from the X1, Y1 back to 2. So that way, we see it as a point view. And there we go. There, at this point here, is the line of intersection at 1, 2, but we see it as a point view. Very important. Okay, now at this point as well, I had two points on my A trace and my B trace, which were 3 and 4, okay, and they were here, so I could actually project them up as well, parallel to the line of intersection. This is just another method for working out the exact same angle. And what I do is I take my distances once again from the x1, y1 back to my plan. So to work out the distance back to 4, x1, y1 back to 4, up to my x2, y2, mark it off. That's my 4, and the exact same for 3. Mark it off. Now that one's gone a bit further up the page, so I'll have to extend up my line. And there we go. And once again, 
that one here was 4, this point here was 3, and all we do is draw on our angle. And there we go, that is our dihedral angle. And technically the 1, 2, 4, which is um sorry the one two four is essentially if i look if i joined it up here that is actually a plane i'm after creating and then my one two three is another plane i've after creating on that there um and essentially that's what i'm after doing so my one two three is one plane and my one two four is another plane and i'm seeing those planes as edge views essentially okay uh they are the two methods uh to complete that question there um Essentially, the rebat method was the first one where we got the surface as a cutting plane and we rebatted it down onto uh, onto the ground. And on the second one was where we did the auxiliary view and we got the true length uh, or the true length of the line of intersection. We got it as a point view up here, and then we located two points as on the traces of the lines A and B. Okay. Once again, hope you found that helpful. That's the question complete there.